Hey everybody, it's Tim from Full Spectrum Laser. So lasers and other CNC machines can be pretty complicated. Even if their operation is relatively simple, there's a lot of technical terms that can throw a lot of beginners for a loop. So today, I'm making a guide for laser vocab. We have a lot of terms to go over, so I'll be sure to bookmark each one in case you want to skip ahead to find the one you're looking for. Now I'm not going to go too deep into these definitions, I'm just going to give a basic definition to get any beginners up to speed. Also to make things simple, we're going to go alphabetically. So with that, our first word is alignment. Oh, that's handy. Alignment in the context of our lasers is the process of adjusting each and every mirror to ensure that the laser beam hits the center of each one. When your laser is out of alignment, you may notice that it might be in or out of focus on different regions of the bed. Next up is beam combiner. Can we not do that? Like right next to my head, it's super loud. Can we just like cut to a different screen? Can we do that? There we go. Beam combiner. Beam combiners are what are known as half mirrors. You can see it right here. Almost every laser system has one. So there's actually two different types of lasers running on most machines. You have your laser source, in this case a CO2 laser, which comes from your tube right here, and a red dot diode, which is basically just a laser pointer. And since they come from two different sources, the beam combiner does exactly what the name suggests. It combines the two beams into one optical path. Billet. That's this little guy right here. You'll typically find them along with your Muse Hobby laser. It's just a little plastic puck that's used for focusing the laser to your material. It serves the same purpose as a focus ruler. Browser. We use this term a lot when we describe our software Retina Engrave 3 as being browser-based. A browser is just a piece of software used to browse the internet. So Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, rest in peace, Microsoft Edge, Firefox, Safari, these are all examples of browsers. CFM. This is a unit for measuring airflow, as it stands for cubic feet per minute. So when we're talking about exhaust fans or fume extractors, you might hear that term. CNC. This stands for Computer Numerically Controlled, and typically describes any kind of machine that's controlled by a computer. So laser cutters, CNC mills, and even 3D printers are considered CNC machines. CO2. This one's pretty easy. It's the chemical formula for carbon dioxide. Typically with us, it's in reference to the gas we use in our laser tubes as our laser source, or gain medium, if you want to get fancy. Curve. A curve is a term often used in vector design software to describe a part of a shape. Another word for this would be segment. Cut. Pretty straightforward. This is when the laser passes completely through a material. This would be as opposed to engraving. We'll get to that in a second. A cut often goes hand in hand with the term vector. Diode, or red dot. As I mentioned with the beam combiner, the red dot diode is the laser pointer that shows you where you're going to fire. It's this guy right here. We use a red dot diode because the actual CO2 laser beam is invisible to the naked eye. The red dot diode is also relatively harmless, just keep it away from your eyes. DPI, another acronym. This one stands for dots per inch and is commonly used when talking about printing. It's the resolution, or amount of detail in a given area of an image. You'll find this acronym when engraving, as the three resolution options are 250, 500, and 1000. Engraving. In laser terms, this is when you take a tiny amount of material off the top of a piece without passing through completely. It's often correlated with the term raster. Exhaust. This word describes both the gases and particulates produced by your laser, as well as the act of venting it out of your machine. Focus. Just like with cameras, a laser needs to be focused. Focusing is the act of moving a lens up or down to cause the smallest part of the beam or focal point to intersect with your material. 
This will give you the sharpest details in the sharpest cuts. Focus ruler. As mentioned before with the billet, a focus ruler is simply a tool used to set the proper focal distance from your lens to your material. Font. A font is the style given to any text you may be using. So Times New Roman, Comic Sans, and Papyrus are all examples of fonts. Fun fact, the font we use in most of our videos and images is a font called ITC Avant-Garde Semi-Bold. Fume Extractor. This is an accessory we sell for our lasers if the user can't vent outside of their workspace. A fume extractor uses particulate and air filters to clean the exhaust of your laser and reintroduce clean air into the room. Galvo. This is a term often used in reference to our fiber lasers. A galvo motor or a galvanometer can quickly manipulate a set of mirrors to move a laser beam around as opposed to the gantry system in the Muse and Pro Series CO2 lasers. So where CO2 and fiber are laser sources, galvo and gantry are the two methods used to move the beams around. Gantry. The gantry is the system in place in both our Muse Hobby lasers as well as our Pro Series lasers. It's probably the most common and most inexpensive ways to manipulate the path, the optical path of the laser. It's the series of arms that carries the laser head around the bed. So this guy right here, that's the gantry. Hardware. This is just a term for a tool or a machine. In reference to our lasers, the laser would be considered the hardware, but also any computer that you're using to run your laser would also be considered hardware. RE3 and other programs that you run on said machines would be considered software. Honeycomb. A honeycomb is what's known as a support bed. They're commonly found on CO2 laser systems, so our Muse Hobby Laser and our Pro Series both have them. They both come with them, actually. So this right here is the honeycomb. You can see it's made out of metal, so the CO2 laser doesn't affect it, but it's also nice and flat and keeps your materials as such. Since it's got holes in it and it's not a solid piece, it also allows air to be drawn through. IP address, or internet protocol address, is a numerical label given to any device that's connected to a computer network. We use them to connect our lasers to any computer on the same network. All of our lasers display their current IP addresses on their touch screens. If you type it into a browser that's on the same network, that's how you access our software, RE3. Kerf. This is simply the width of the cut. On bladed machines, like a table saw, the kerf will be the thickness of the blade. An eighth of an inch is standard on most table saws, but here we're talking about light. So your kerf will be much smaller and may vary slightly depending on your material, your power settings, or your focus. Kiss cut. This is typically the use of a vector cut at low power so as not to cut all the way through. Kiss cuts can be used to cut stickers into shape or even create fold lines on cardboard. Knife edge. The knife edge is another kind of support bed. They only come on the pro systems, but this is what they look like. Typically you'll have a honeycomb and you rest it on top, but this is the knife edge right here. It's super great for large rigid materials, but if you use soft flexible materials like fabric, you might have some issues. However, if you use a large rigid material and you're doing tiny little shapes, the shapes can actually drop through and you can utilize your catch tray and you'll have all your pieces right there. Laser. Fun fact, laser is actually an acronym and it stands for light amplified by stimulated emission of radiation. Put simply, a laser is amplified light created by excited particles. Laser light's also coherent, which means that it's focused in one direction and doesn't spread out like other light sources. Laser tube. This is the glass tube found in the back of your CO2 laser. As you can see right here, this is where the CO2 gas is. Keep in mind these tubes are consumable and they don't last forever. Lens. The lens is a piece of glass that focuses your laser beam so it's small enough to cut and engrave efficiently. Living hinge. This is a cut pattern often used on wood that allows the otherwise rigid material to bend organically. This is a living hinge. 
mark. A mark is basically any visible effect the laser has on the material. You can also use it as a verb, so if your laser isn't firing for whatever reason, you may hear someone say that it isn't marking. Milliamp. This is the unit typically used to measure the electrical current powering your laser. A milliamp is one one thousandth of an amp, or ampere. Mirrors. Pretty self-explanatory. These are in reference to the mirrors you find on your laser. They are used to redirect the beam into the lens and subsequently onto your material. Most gantry systems use three mirrors, four if you include the beam combiner, which, as I said earlier, is considered a half mirror. Nodes, or anchor points. This is another design software term. Nodes are simply the points on either end of a line or curve. When changing the shape of a design, it is often done by manipulating a node or anchor point. Nose cone. This is simply the cone out of which the laser beam fires. This will be your nose cone if you have a pro machine. This guy right here will be your nose cone if you have a muse. Notched or finger joints. These terms are generally used when referencing a type of joint. This is a way to join two pieces together, and it's a super easy pattern to use while laser cutting. We use makercase.com to generate finger joints for our projects. Optics. Typically anything that has to do with the transmission or deflection of light. So your mirrors, your beam combiner, and your lens would all be considered optics. PSU. This stands for power supply unit. This is the component of your laser that takes power from your electrical outlet and distributes it to the rest of the machine. When troubleshooting power issues, this acronym may come up. They're just referring to this guy if you have a pro, or this guy if you have a muse. Pyroligneous acid, also known as wood vinegar or wood acid, is a dark liquid produced by wood when it's superheated. You can sometimes notice this substance around the edges of your cut wood pieces. Raster. This term is used to describe a non-vector image, or an engraving. RE3 interprets non-vector file formats, like BMPs, JPEGs, or PNGs, etc., as raster data. That means that these images will engrave and not cut. Rotary. A rotary is an attachment for our lasers that allows you to engrave around the circumference of a cylindrical object. You can see it in action here. CO2 lasers, as well as fiber lasers, can both use rotary attachments. But our rotary attachments are not universal, so make sure you know which one you need. Software. This is typically used to describe a computer program. Microsoft Word, Photoshop, Internet browsers, even a game like Solitaire would be considered software. But if we ever mention our software, we're usually talking about Retina Engrave 3, our proprietary laser control software. Thermal paper. This is a type of paper that reacts to heat. We include thermal paper with every one of our CO2 lasers for use with the alignment process. Doing a test fire of your laser onto thermal paper will produce a small dot where the laser intersects the paper. Thumb screw. This is a screw that is used for adjusting things like Z height. They're called thumb screws because they can usually be loosened and tightened by hand and without tools. Vector. Vector, in terms of lasers and design software, are math-based lines and curves that can be infinitely scaled. They're also used as cutting paths, so if you want something to cut instead of engrave, you'll need a vector file format, like an SVG, a DXF, or an AI file. You can also create vector lines and curves inside of RE3. Wattage. This is the unit of power used to rate our laser tubes. Our hobby machines have smaller 40 to 45 watt tubes, where our pro machines go from 90 watts all the way up to 150 watts. These numbers simply denote how powerful the laser is. Work area, or bed. Your work area is the area of the laser that will cut or engrave. So this right here, that's your work area. It's also known as a bed. So if you hear people talking about 20 by 12 or 48 by 36, they're referring to the work area or bed size. Z table or Z height. Anything involving the letter Z when it comes to CNC machines typically is in reference to the up and down axis of the machine. Now, lasers are largely 2D machines, but when it comes to different focal lengths and varying material heights, 
you still need the laser head to move up and down on that third axis. So while these are your x and y axes, this is your z axis. With that in mind, your z height is the distance from the laser head to the material and z table. And a z table is in reference to our pro machines, where instead of moving the laser head up and down, the entire bed moves like this. Well guys, that'll about do it for our laser vocab review. If there are any other terms that we didn't cover in this video, post them down in the comments and we'll get back to you. I hope this was a helpful guide for both beginners and pros alike. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, keep making.